That was the Force Awakening, as they say. I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you thought this it was is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. <laughs> Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are you <laughs> going to do? We are. Oh, we're actually nearing the end. We're actually. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're, like we're actually getting there. The we're end. actually getting there. Look at us. Two and a half hours um, later. Literally. Okay. Oh. Yeehaw. Journey to the Star Cluster. Oh! Mm, <laughs> ah! but, okay, so first of all, Kevin Kiner. A1. I just think the really impressive thing is that he continues the legacy of John Williams, like, incredibly well. Oh, but yeah. But then he also has moments of, like, his own flair. Journey and to then, the Star Cluster, it's over now. Burying twin moons. the dead. Twin <gasps> Twin Moons. Don't Twin even Moons is such a unique sound moons. in Star Wars. Like I just see by the time this is posted, the video will already be up, but in my um I just did like just earlier today, like right before calling you, I did my legacy video. Mm -hmm. And Twin Moons is such it's like it's such a unique sound in Star so Wars. Oh like, good. It's it's like the musical moments like that where you're like, oh, like that's is really what makes special. A scene. Like that's not just yeah. mimicking someone else's style. Because a part of what Kevin Kiner has to do is mimic the is, style of John Williams. Right. That's what Michael G. Chino had to do too. Right. And for Rogue One. Right. And but you can see their their element in that. It's right. not they, just they him. Have, it's them. They have their own like style that that they yeah inject into that um mm -hmm. and I just I it's so impressive to me that that a music can managed. make a scene yeah and to it's so make, impressive yeah. that, that, they, that they managed to pull this off because like having to musically continue a story that John Williams told most of is hard like that's gotta that's be so not, hard like that's not easy but then yeah. at the same time to put in something that's unique and then still have it work. Mm. Beautiful. It's insane. And this is such a beautiful piece of music. It's one of it's definitely one of my favorites in the entire series. Yeah. It, it's like oh, like the mm, the live strings. I can't it's just, oh. do, 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 do. Oh. it's a sound Chills. like literal like, show. Dude, those those live strings. That's like not something you get to hear all the time. Too. And it's like, just strings. It, oh. Yeah. I know it was inspired by like a classical music composer, but like a contemporary classical music composer. And if you like listen to like a, like a couple things that I, that I composer, like you can you can hear it. And I think that that's cool. I think yeah. that that's cool that it was like inspired by. Just something not even related to Star Wars, and they're just like, let's just make some legit classical music and throw it into our cartoon. Yeah. Oh, it's so good though. Why I not? Think, like, I think if you take away that music, it ruins the scene. Like, without Journey yeah. to the Star Cluster, that scene would not be as good as it is. You know? You're so. It makes that is like that is an that is an episode making piece of music right there. Yes. It is, it's so beautiful. It's such yeah. a beautiful piece of music, and the whole scene after like. Beautiful. It's, just, it's so like well visually. Done. Like, am I looking at a Star Wars cartoon or am I looking at a, a Van Gogh painting? I don't know. It looks like Starry Night. <laughs> that's what I always <laughs> look, think when I. That's what I always think when I look at it. I'm like this, like oh. really looks like an impressionist painting. The visual of the star cluster is like it's so beautiful. And then when they drop out of the star cluster too, and it's just surrounding them. Yes, the colors oh. I love, like the kind yes. of like muted colors of that mm -hmm. area. It's just all oh, visually. It's visually, so it's great. So beautiful. Rebels honestly has some really good visuals. They like, really, really good do. scenic visuals. Yeah. Like I love when they're going into hyperspace and you can see the colors. I think that's one of my favorite parts the Rebels did was they introduced yes. colors into hyperspace. Yes. It when, really like, when, makes When that. people get like pulled out of hyperspace and the colors are so cool. I love yes. it. Yes. Oh. I love it. Or like when Hera jumps through hypers hyperspace through that construction thing and it's mm. the colors like exploding mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. the thing. It's so cool. It's uh, like 
Rebels had so many good visual moments. Everyone's so busy, like, making fun of the, like, character designs. I don't even see why they do that. I love the character designs. Thank you, because I feel like I'm not allowed to say it. I don't mind how the characters look. I really don't. Of the animation in Rebels. I love it. I hate it when people say that it's not good animation, because the, what, what they actually want to get at is the design, okay? Do not even touch the animation. The animation was impeccable. The, the yeah. movement of the characters... So great. You cannot, like... There is nothing bad to be said about that. Okay, going back to the episode. <laughs> going back to the episode. <laughs> so I think another thing is when Zeb is letting Ashlyn the Force guide him. You don't have to be a Jedi to use the Force. Like, my favorite thing is midi-chlorians. People hate the damn midi-chlorians, but I love them. Midi-chlorians because... aren't that bad. They're really not. Exactly, they make sense. It, it, lit- it is literally proof as to the galaxy is bound together by the Force. Like, they make sense. I mean, I'm... I'm kind of annoyed by them sometimes, just because sometimes I I just wish the forest was, like, completely mysterious and enigmatic and there was, like, nothing else. But then, on the other hand, I actually think that midichlorians are, like, they're kind of cool. It's kind of a cool concept. There's little cells in you that communicate. That is the force. Like, that's... And it's in everyone. And you can see it. Zeb has those midichlorians. Hera has those mini chlorians, and they're all used in different ways, but mm-hmm. they're not strong enough to be Jedi. Right. You don't have enough of them, but you have right. them. You have them. Everyone has yeah. them. So, yeah, like, I just, I love the whole idea on Rebels of, like, the Force not belonging to Force. To the Jedi, people. it belongs to Belong itself. To everyone. And it's, yeah, itself, and also, like, because it because it binds yeah. everything together. Like, I feel yeah. like Rebels really drives that home, that it binds everything It really drives together. the original trilogy vibes. It does! Rebels is such a, like, it's such a good, like, supplemental piece to the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's such it's a good key. bridge it's from- It's crucial, too. It is such a good bridge from the Clone Wars era to the original trilogy era. Like, yeah. it really is. It is. Because- it's like it's an incredible companion piece to the Clone Wars, but at the same time, it's a perfect tie-in to the original trilogy. How did they do this? All right, and back to the episode again. Back to the episode again. <laughs> Ezra and Kanan with the assist. Yeah, um, I love the that. That's yeah. touching. That is so touching. Like that is a heartwarming scene, and it's like the force and it's like this the force is at work through like all three of them and i love everyone yeah how kane and ezra are like they just know yeah and they're like because obviously they're force sensitive so you know they have a stronger i guess connection to the force than than zeb would and so they're like you know they're using that to help him yeah i love that moment because of course, there's what's happening literally, and it's that this ritual doesn't work without force-sensitive people. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's happening, like, literally. Like, it's a force, yeah. it's a force ritual, it's a force-based ritual, so you need force-sensitive yeah, people. Like, so you kind of okay. Need them here. Yeah. Like, okay. Like, that's the plot. But, like, remember when I said that the plot doesn't matter on Rebels? Yeah. <laughs> so this is not about that. This is about solidarity. Yes. That's what you get out of that moment, right? You watch that, and this is, like, this is Kanan and Ezra, like, supporting Zeb Mm -hmm. on an emotional level. Yeah. I feel like a lot of things with the Force are actually just symbols for, like, mental and emotional things going on. I feel like I noticed that on occasion. Like, I feel like, like, I feel like Ezra, like, Ezra's special, like, Force power is being highly attuned to connecting with the world around him. Like, that's, like, his force power, but that's actually just a reflection of who he is as a person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so now yeah. this moment here is, like, they're connecting with each other through the force, and they're supporting each other through the force, but that's just, it's just a representation of just them supporting yeah. Zeb in, mm-hmm. this, in this moment. Just like, them being a family. They're a family. 
and I just like thinking about their relationships because obviously like Zeb and Kanan are really close and we don't get to see it a lot like they don't get into it a lot but when we do see it like you feel it like we've seen them like in droids in distress like Kanan like cradling Zeb on the ground when he got beat up by Callus, you know, like you feel like you feel that you feel like that yeah. connection that they have, and then you get to this episode, and it's Zeb talking about like he was as good as dead until Kanan found him. So now you know why. And yeah, it's because Kanan saved his life. Yeah. Well, on an emotional level, which is also a physical level. Yeah. And so now, like, so there's that relationship. And there's that, like, relationship of support. And then there's Ezra, who's, like, new to Zeb. Like, that's a, that's a new relationship. And, that, and it started out kind of rocky a little bit. But you can kind of see Ezra's just a person you can go to. But then, yeah, but then they became brothers. Yeah. Pretty quickly, you know? And so they have something, like, really special, too. In this episode, Zeb even, like, opens up to Ezra. And it's just we love so to see good. it. We love we love to see it. We love to see yeah, it. Yeah, we do. I just I I do. I love that moment. I do too. I think the last thing that I wanted to note is this quote. Consider the system charted. Now that the ghost has been here, we can always go back. Biggest foreshadow of the entire freaking century. Everything is so connected. Oh my gosh. Like literally just the As number of things. Star Wars, this makes me happy. Just the number this of things foreshadow. that, like, the number of things where we don't know it's foreshadowing, <laughs> and it is. Just the number of things that get, like, randomly introduced, and they just, like, come back. There was so much planning done in the show. Like, they really knew how it was going to end when they started it, and you can tell. <laughs> the purgle. <coughs> Oh, um, the Bendu's line to Thrawn in season three. Uh-huh. Ahem, world between worlds being in literally the tenth episode. Ahem. Anyway, whenever they go to the Jedi Temple, it's literally like there's the world in there. It's just there. Like when, like um, when, like whenever they talk to Yoda in the Jedi Temple. That's just the world between worlds, and we just didn't know it. And we didn't know. We just didn't even know it. But that's like that's <laughs> official because in the um in the Rebels Recon for World Between Worlds, Dave literally said so. Yeah. But I also love the ending of this episode, and mm-hmm. I love that ending of like saying they can go back because it's still hopeful. It, yes, exactly. Like Zeb went through such a hopeless period in his life. And now, like, and it, he finally gets to have hope in his narrative, and I love that. Yeah. And it's just, it's so, it's so significant because, see, there was this line, I think that Ezra said to Zeb earlier in the episode, where he was like, you failed them then, so, like, don't fail, don't them, fail now. them now. Yeah. And so, now, now he has the chance to not To make it up fail to them. them. He has, the right. And... You know, it's kind of interesting because he held on to his grief very tightly. So now it's like, and it's hard to let go of it because sometimes yeah. it's like when I, when I don't have this, when I don't have a reason to feel sorry for myself anymore, who am I? <laughs> You're like, like man, it's I hard. have to get a hold of myself now? <laughs> like, it's, it's hard because sometimes it's like, who am I without my grief yeah so now zeb fully has the chance to like move on and he has like he has to seize this because now it's like this is charted we can go back yeah and so now zeb actually has to be like then i have to actually step up and like let go of my grief over this everything you fear to lose and he has to take hold of this second chance. And I just, like, wow. Good stuff. Mm, This is such a good episode. This is such a good episode. (laughs)
that too. Obviously, because we talked about it for like two and a half so, hours. So, yeah, <laughs> almost three. We're coming up on three here. In like coming up minutes. on three. Well, <laughs> well, that was so much fun. Mal, I enjoyed. I enjoyed talking to you. I enjoyed every minute of that three hours. You have no <laughs> idea. Every minute of the three hours that we spent <laughs> doing this. Um, we truly are kindred spirits. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> now there are two of them. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Anyway, now there are two of them. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more of this disaster duo. I'm sure there will be more. <laughs> and may the force be with you always.